campus analyze Nigeria 61 years after independence. My first guest today is the Senate Minority Leader and former Deputy Governor of Abia State, Senator Enyinaya Abaribe. He's seen by some as a political maverick, fearlessly taking decisions that break the mold of convention, unswerving in his defense of his beliefs, and unflinching in his criticism of what he sees as the excesses and failures of the Nigerian state. And Senator Abaribe joins me now in the studio. Absolutely delighted to see you. It's my pleasure. My very great pleasure to be here. And I have to say, happy Independence Day. <laughs> <laughs> but let's let's do let's let's take the happiness back to the day of independence in 1960 because I actually have your very fascinating book here made in a an autobiography that you obviously wrote a life of coincidences and in it I was glancing through it and there is evidence in there of what you did on Independence Day in 1960. Tell us about it. Well, uh, at that time, in 1960, eating rice <laughs> <laughs> was a treat. Either you're eating it on Sundays or when you go to weddings or something. And they gave us rice in school. And I, rice I, I was and five stew. years, rice and stew, I was five years old. It was wow. such a big, I mean, deal. deal for all of us. And we expected that this was going to be how Nigeria would be. All of us eating rice every day. Every day. Rather than once a year. <laughs> <laughs> the expectations. And has it turned out to be well, that way? I guess that uh, nobody that looks at Nigeria today will say that we have actually fulfilled our potential. So it calls for very sober. Reflection. reflection. Nevertheless, for you though, you've managed to be eating rice every day. Uh, well, you? let's let just <laughs> say that a few Nigerians eat rice that is important, which we will have expected that we will have been beyond the stage where we are today. Mm. Right. But on, on a more serious note, um, just taking off from what you just said about where we ought to be today, how would you say that this country called Nigeria has established itself since independence in 1960? Well, I would say that with, with um, just there was this song, a reggae song that said, one step forward, two steps yeah. backward. You know, <laughs> and, uh, I think that's what has happened to Nigeria. We seem to move forward and then we, you know, find ourselves also going back. And that has made most Nigerians to be very, very despondent today mm. about their country. You know, so, so, so you think many people don't think there's anything worth celebrating? Uh, I called a lawyer today, this morning. And he told me, and I said, oh, did you listen to the president's speech? What do you think about it? I said, I didn't. I said, what? You didn't? Before, October 1 speeches mm. were waited. It's like the Queen's I speech mean, in England. everybody wants yeah. to see it. Because it's supposed to be something that the Americans call the state of the nation mm. speech. Absolutely. And you, 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 you look forward to it. You, you know, but right now, people just walked and just went their way. As far as they are concerned, just another of those rhetorics. Mm. But in, in fairness to, to, to the Nigerian presidency, though, in most parts of the world, most people don't really care, even <laughs> if the country is doing well. I mean, yes. th there was a time when the Queen's speech was in, in England, maybe just after the war and, you know, the Second World War, and so on, people used to always, I mean, most kids today don't really care what the Queen says. Well, let's put it this way. If mm. we were... A prosperous country and you don't care then of course the prosperity will go <laughs> but you know when you're not a prosperous country and when you're faced with all this type of problems i think everybody ought to key in to mm. see which direction and where we're going yes that's a, that's a good point we, we will get to analyze president buhari's speech a bit more as we get, get into the chat but starting from the very beginning and the meet the period um around 1960 uh, going forward do you think nigeria's problems 
are rooted in the colonial powers, ignoring the rules of geography and, and forcing different cultures and ethnicities into one country? Is that the essential root of all roots of Nigeria's problem? Well, some people think so. Some people think that the seeds of the destruction mm. of Nigeria today was sown by the British at that time. And I've read somewhere where I think one of the colonial secretaries, of course, was writing and saying that the, um, the beautiful bride mm. <laughs> of the South being merged with the uh, husband of the North and all that type of thing. So, but I do not really think that where we are today is to be you know, put fully on that. I mm. think that we as Nigerians took certain steps and those steps that we took are what has led us to- Basically we inflicted to, 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 the problems to, to, to on where, ourselves. To where we are right. today. I mean, things that you're supposed to do, th uh, the right things that we're supposed to do because of maybe um, the maybe the right people went there mm. but I tell you between 1960 and 1966 which saw a very rapid rise mm. in development in the different regions and so forth and the competition and everything that was going on which made everybody feel that Nigeria was going to be the next you know, mm. uh, world power. What did you get from the time that, you know, there was the coup of uh, the war? And then there was another, I think from 1970, there was another sport mm. forward. <coughs> then, of course, we went backwards. And, of course, we've been now having another sport during the uh, PDP era. Mm. which made us mm. the biggest economy in Africa. And then, of course, we are back again, uh, scrambling f to feed ourselves today. So mm. I think that we cannot outsource the problem. It is us that is the problem. Right. Mm. Well, that's a very um, telling assessment. Um, someone wrote that there are lots of places that are unsuccessful but few have been as unsuccessful as, as Africa, and Nigeria personifies Africa. I, is that perhaps an exaggeration compared to the other, other countries of the world? I, I do not think that it's an exaggeration. Let, let's, 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 every, let's just put everything in perspective. Mm. Bangladesh, debt poor, broke up, everything bad. We are a day to day. Vietnam, years of conflict, everything. Now Nigerians are going to Vietnam to actually try to live there. So, of course, let's not talk about the Asian Tigers, who we were at the same stage with at the point of independence and where they are today. And of course, the one that should actually make us weep. Malaysia, coming to Nigeria taking palm fruits from Nigeria to plant in Malaysia, which became the seed of their industrialization. And we now have to go to Malaysia today to buy palm oil for our industry. So you could see that the problem cannot mm. be with anybody else, but we have to ask ourselves whether we have done the right thing. And do you accept responsibility yourself as one of the leaders of this country? I mean, you were deputy governor of Abia State, and now, of course, you are minority leader in the Senate. Your party, the PDP, presided over 16 years of this country's independence. Yes, um, I do not accept that we are the cause. I think that at the end of the day, Every one of us will take some type of vicarious responsibility, but some more than others. Um, if you look at what 
uh, let's not talk about being deputy. Deputies <laughs> in Nigeria is is superfluous. Is very far to deputies in Nigeria as spare tires. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but at least you were in the corridors of. Power. I was in so the corridors of power and did my bit. Right. Okay. Let me, let me just it was ask my you. My bit that led to the so much. Uh, right. you know, uh, rough that. Let's just call it that. Way. Okay. Um, let's turn to the growing number of killings and, and what appear to be targeted assassinations in the southeast region, your region. Uh, the latest uh, widely reported one, of course, the murder of Dr. Chike Akunyeli, um, you know, husband of the late Professor Dora Akunyeli. Um, you said that there is a concerted effort to introduce a culture of assassinations in the southeast. Can you expand on that a bit? Well, what I meant, because I, I said it on this on Arise, Arise News, yeah. news uh, because we saw the trend mm. of what was going on, and uh, we met as uh, the southeast caucus of the National Assembly and uh, reviewed what was going on. And uh, everyone was very, very concerned about it. And uh, we came out and we uh, made a public statement that we do not support this type of mindless killing. Mm. And that um, because it wasn't something that was with us before, that is a new thing. And uh, we wanted the security agents and the governors of the states that they should dig in and find out who is introducing these um, assassinations that are going on this mindless killing and uh, that that is not the Igbo in us and um, I said it here that I am so worried and we condemn in its entirety anything that is uh, uh, introducing violence and that even those who claim that oh that is the IPOP people doing it mm. that we also want to challenge IPOP if IPOP is doing it do you liberate people by killing them so no, they, it doesn't make sense mm. do, do you do you destroy people's economy by and, and then turn around and say oh that we are liberating them. So well, there's you, you, something you, going on there. You mentioned destroying the economy. I mean, yes. what about all these sit-at-home that, that, orders? That, that, that's what I mean by, by, I, by destroying yeah. the economy. Sit at home today, sit at home tomorrow, and people are just... Mm. Uh, nobody knows what to do, and people are living in a state of fear. Uh, for for uh, Dr. Connelly, it was such a gruesome thing. Mm. And I really am so... Uh, uh, I would say sympathetic with the children. Right. Now, I, I read something that the children said. And this is very, very uh, <laughs> critical. Their father fought in the Civil War. Mm. So if you're IPOB and you want to kill him, you're killing somebody that fought in the Civil War for you. So you can see that there is something going on that we do not understand. Right. And people say, okay, maybe it's because of the elections. Elections, you either win or you lose. You don't kill people because of mm. elections. So, what we suggested from the uh, National Assembly Caucus is that everybody must come out now and say no to this violence. Right. People must come out and say no to this violence. I, I Let's think no that's, that's an important afraid. thing. Let's to not do. say, oh, let me not say it because mm. who knows what is going to happen tomorrow. No. We must say no to this violence going on in the southeast because we came out from a civil war our parents our grandparents rebuilt the economy of the southeast and got us to where we are today how can we now destroy mm. it again and of course um connected to that um is the travails of uh, the separatist leader namdi Kanu, who is under detention uh, what's your take on his continued detention? Because there have been you know, reports that lawmakers, you included, are trying to help to secure his release. Uh, no, we said we will meet with the authorities and see how do we come in and see how we can douse the tension and secure some resolution. But I'm very glad that the president, in his speech today, 
now call for dialogue. And I'm so glad that he is now the person calling for dialogue because we have been the people shouting and saying, let us talk. Mm. Because there is nothing in Nigeria that we cannot talk about. And one of the, I would say, the things that, you know, that they always say in all these speeches that I don't like is saying, oh, Nigeria independent, uh, uh, is non-negotiable. No, you can negotiate anything. Right. Okay. And, and that is the reason why both the Middle Belt, the uh, South, South, the Ohanese, the uh, South, where everybody's saying, let us talk, let us <laughs> negotiate. Senator even, Abari even, Bay, even, um, I, I'm really I, sorry to interrupt you, you, but I'm literally out of time. But thank you very much indeed <laughs> for you, coming in. You. You're watching the Arise interview. Stay with us. <laughs>